Okay, we're going to take a quick look at current in parallel circuits. This is obviously a parallel circuit because it has a branch in it. Uh, it's not just a simple loop like a series circuit. Um, and the current that flows around this parallel circuit is made up of negatively charged electrons. Lots and lots of them, millions, billions of them. We're just going to focus on one electron going around this circuit. But there are actually lots of them. Now, to measure the current in this parallel circuit, we're going to use ammeters. So I'm going to put an ammeter in the circuit here. And I'm going to put an ammeter in the circuit here. Now you notice, as this electron flows around the circuit, when it reaches a branch, it has to make a choice. Does it go through the middle branch of the circuit, or does it go through the lower branch of the circuit? Well, whichever branch it goes through, you'll notice that it always passes through the first ammeter, and it always passes through the last ammeter. So, no matter which branch, middle branch or lower branch, the electron goes through, it always has to pass through these two ammeters. That means the current through these two ammeters in this circuit will be the same. So if the current through this ammeter is 6 amps, and you're asked what's the current through this ammeter over here, the answer would be it has to be 6 amps. Because electrons that go through this ammeter also have to go through this ammeter, all of them, therefore the current must be the same. However, the current isn't going to be the same necessarily through these branches, because the electrons don't all have to go through one of the branches, they can actually go through both of them. So if we put an ammeter in the middle branch and an ammeter in the lower branch, we're not going to get 6 amps. Uh, now it turns out you can kind of imagine electrons as being slightly lazy. So instead of just taking a 50-50 choice which branch to go down, uh, they would rather go down the branch which has a lower resistance to them. And this branch here only has one bulb, whereas this branch has two bulbs and twice the resistance. So it turns out the electrons are more likely to go through the middle branch. So let's say we've got a current of 4 amps through the middle branch. You could then be asked, well, what's the current through the lower branch? Well, the electrons have to go one way or the other. They've got to choose one of these branches. Now, if 4 amps of current is flowing through this branch, then and there's 6 amps of current flowing into the branch, then 2 amps of current must be going somewhere. So the current through the lower branch must be 2 amps. So this is something you'll always see in parallel circuits. In parallel circuits, the current going into a branch always equals the current going out of a branch. So in this case, 6 amps has been split up into 4 amps going through this branch and 2 amps going through this branch. So it would be quite common for you to be asked to, to fill in uh, missing currents. So if you're asked what the current through the first ammeter is in this circuit, you know that the current through this ammeter is 6 amps and all the current that goes through A4 must go through A1 so the current in this, uh, this ammeter is 6 amps. If they asked you for example what's the current through the middle branch you know that there's 6 amps flowing into this junction here 2 amps flowing through this branch so there must be 4 amps flowing through this branch. So that's a, a quick overview of current in parallel circuits.